So let me tell you, when I was teaching you, remember I told you about the incident with the African brother, and he said, you know, oh my nigga, and I, I went off on him, whatever. But that got me to thinking, you know, because then I, um, because of my degree, I have to um, I do research. So I have like to, to two groups and plus an individual thing that I'm doing research on. But one of the groups doing research on is um, out of Dumbaza, infamous township out of, right outside of uh, King Williamstown. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I'm interviewing the kids, <clears throat> you know, I'm guessing their name, and then they were saying, like, well, they give their, you know, their given name, then they give their surname, then they give their clan name. And I'm going, like, this is weird. I've been to South Africa since 2003. Maybe I just didn't notice. Maybe it's just Cape Town, all that old metropolitan, they lose mm -hmm. their stuff. Nobody says about their clan name. They would say, give a name, that's it. So they would give their given name, their surname, and their clan affiliation. And of course, it's all under the, um, the EC Coast, uh, EC, well, under the close uh, culture, but the, the clan is important. Then I'm thinking, like, well, here I am, an American that's going through the Middle Passage. And because you can get through the whole slave situation, they destroyed family, so I don't know what my clan is. Even if they got a DNA, and they say, oh, you come from, you know, the Gambia or, you know, wherever, you know. Uh, I, I can know that, okay, I come from, you know, say, Senegal, but I don't know what clan. I could still could know what clan. So I'm saying, so, so African Americans, I mean, little passage African Americans, they ain't got no clan. That's when I said, oh, let me think about this. And you know, writing and, and reading helps you to think a little differently. Mm -hmm. So I said, listen to my past, and I said, okay, let me write something. So I wrote something. Here's what it sounds like. According to author Malcolm Gladwell, because of the time period I came of age, I am an outlier. According to me, I am a contrarian. According to the Mayan system of 20 solar seals, I am a white world bridger, one who brings disparate elements together. According to the Chinese astrology, I am a metal tiger, a loner. Mm. According to American Indian astrology, I am a woodpecker, you know, tenacious. I like that one, actually. According to Europe culture, I am a child of Ogun, warrior slash healer. Now people don't tell you that. Well, well I won't get into that one. You know. Ogun, warrior healer. Don't trust me on this. That's what I'm saying. According to Western American surreptitious classifications, I am a nigga. Just not according to me, a purely American bred nigga. I am. Well, I have to talk black American now if you don't mind. I be a worldly African of the nigger clan. I know people are getting upset now. Oh, Lord. Ooh, what the brother say that? Okay. Historically, the term nigger came into popular use during the time of the American Civil War. Oh, not Civil War. It came into use in the time of the American Revolutionary War. I always say that. I don't know why I do that. It was around the same era of the invention of the white race. The powers that be that were around that time needed to separate the lowly at, the, uh, at that time because they, well, they were presenting a united front against the oppression being forged upon them. By floating the postulate that all and any person with white skin were superior to all persons of dark skin, a new nation, the United States of North America, you know, took root. Now this this thing is this is like a, they, they drove a wedge. It's like a divide and conquer tactic, and it successfully took root in the fabric of this new nation of you know, North America, United States of North America. Eventually, because of the subservient nature of chattel slavery, the term festered as a derogatory, or I should say, the most <laughs> derogatory term in the English language. After slavery and during the antebellum period and on through Jim Crow and, and, and through the Civil Rights and Black Power era, the term was twisted and turned according to who was using it. Mm -hmm. It could be, well actually it could set people off in violent rages. I mean, 
It especially set the political and social Negro leaders of the times you know, into a tailspin. All one needed to do is say the word nigga, and whatever agenda was being addressed fell into disarray. Mm. Then the hip hop nation or generation came into being, it took an early 70s, now on 70s through the 80s. Now, now what they did, they effectively abandoned, well they were effectively abandoned by their mentors and elders when they came of age, um, some other time I'll tell you about that. And they turned the phrase, nigga became acceptable to that generation. <laughs> well, much to the consternation of the leaders and the elders of the day, of, you know, from that day to this, you know, you make it upset. <clears throat> Now, I embrace the notion of turning the meaning again. To be a nigga I am, you know, actually to be the nigga that I am, you have to have lineage surviving the middle passage. So if one parent is African and another parent uh, North, Central, or South American, but neither lineage went through the middle passage, you would be an African-American or an American-African, depending on one's mentality. Mm. But one would not be a nigger. If your lineage came through the Middle Passage, placing you in South America, mainly Brazil, uh, Central America, the Caribbean, or North America, inclusive of Canada, then one is an African-American of nigger stock. I could say middle passage stock, but I'm saying the next stock. Mm. If one chooses to remain under the terminological, that's a that's not a real word, I made that word up. Don't worry about it. I can do those those kind of things. Mm. My undergraduate degree is in English literature. Mm. That gives me license to butcher the language mm. and make up new words. Anyway. <laughs> um, if one chooses to remain under the terminological yoke of prevailing linguistic machinations, this tangential struggle will continue. If one morphs the term to something like uber nigger or easy nigger or yo nigger, mm -hmm. well, then we would be deep into the dictum of the niggers inheriting the wretched of this earth. you say inspired that? Well, a number of things. Mm -hmm. I was walking off campus mm -hmm. and this cat says, yo, my nigga. I, I remember. You and I you. come back to him and I said, no, I can't be your nigga. I can mm -hmm. only be your brother. Mm -hmm. And you can only be my brother because you didn't go through the middle passage. Mm -hmm. Only somebody mm -hmm. goes through the middle passage can, can do that. So that was one incident. But then I said, that guy said, I was filming these cats and they were talking about the class that I really don't have a class. And then I'm going through my memory banks and going like, wait, Richard Pryor had this joke about, you know, they brought the best of us here, you know, the kings and the queens, the princess and princesses and the, you know, the, 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 the people who knew how to do animal husbandry and, you know, growing crops and, and build America. But since the people come from all over Africa and they were separated families and everything like that, we are trying to communicate with them. And somebody says, no, I'm the boo boo now. Mm -hmm. so, they, they, so, so Richard says, this is Richard Pryor, he's a comedian. But Richard did a lot of reading. People don't understand Richard read. Richard like, Richard read, but like, like all these people that they, they, they don't know that Marilyn Monroe was a great beater. Oh, that's nothing to do with us, but hey, my point is. So he says, the Lord works in mysterious ways. So that's what God said. They, they say God works in mysterious ways. So he said, look, y'all arguing just one try, niggas. <laughs> mm. Later on, Richard said he don't use the word nigga no more when he was in Africa and blah, 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 and all this stuff. But it's a valid point. But what's, what really hit me is that we invested so much. In other words, if we've invested so much in that, what we, I mean, my peoples, my niggas invested so much in that. Then if somebody call you nigga, you go crazy, you might kill somebody. Mm -hmm. You might be killed, you might beat somebody. But that same joke when I heard uh, from Richard comes from the thing called Watch Dax, this movie Watch Dax. And you hear all the movie, you know, they talking to each other like, nigga, 
this, maybe that, whatever, different humans. But, you know, they even say, like, if somebody, you know, somebody was saying, like, uh, you know, uh, somebody was calling a nigga on play, he went to his father, his father said, look, I'd say, well, they might call you nigga and just beat them to death. You know, just beat them up. They <laughs> beat their behinds, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see, just from this one word. Mm -hmm. But then again, the hip hop generation came along, and they just got tired of the people saying, no, 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 no. Plus, they, they said, we'll make it a positive state. Spend it positive, they just keep on going. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you still got the old cats still investing in whatever, and they're saying, no, you can't say that word, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Instead of saying, like, okay, hey, let's not be that. Let's ignore that. Let, in fact, let's, let's follow that young generation. Let's listen to the youngsters instead of listening to us. Let's mm -hmm. listen to the youngsters. The youngsters, what they did, it's positive for us. It's positive. Other people still can't use it, but if you're in the hip hop, you can use it to kill you. See? Mm -hmm. Then you got this whole confusion because then white people say, oh, I'm a nigga. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then you got this, you know, white people call you. It's, it's crazy. But but had another thing, let me just one more time. Thing. When I first had this little thing about this, there was a comedian named Lenny Bruce. And there's an old direct line, and Lenny Bruce is like a, a, a um, in the tradition of this guy, Lord Buckley, you know, uh, these are white guys. Anyway, Lenny Bruce, uh, so I think that Lenny Bruce got it from Lord Buckley, but I could be wrong. But Lenny Bruce has this joke where he says, like, you know, not joke, he talks, he, he says basically, uh, you know, if you if you have a bad name, if you have a epilepsy or whatever that you call on somebody, if you say it long enough, <laughs> quick, um, it just mean, it becomes meaningless. Now at that time, um, Lenny Bruce and Dick Gregory were well, they were telling jokes at the same time to Gregory just starting out. And I heard the same thing from Dick Gregory. He said, if you just say, you know, not the words are like, another thing at times is wild and Puerto Rican is spick and you know, you know nigga, but you know, nigga's the worst, you know. They say, if you say, spick, 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So when you call me a nigga, instead of me reacting like it's something bad, I'm like, yeah. In fact, I'm a bad nigga. I'm, I'm the I'm the baddest nigga on the planet. You know why? Because I come from a lineage that came through the little passage. We went through the worst of the worst. In fact, my people went to North Carolina. If you was a slave in North Carolina and you was bad, you know what they did? They sent you down to the penal colony in Georgia. So, I mean, my, we suffer. You know, like nobody else, families torn apart. It's not like any other slavery, any place in the history. Not even at the time in, in South America, it was owned by the Catholics, kept families together, you know. But the Protestants, you know, where we was running America, they just. <laughs> so, so that's the whole particular point. And, and it was interesting, at the same time, there was this whole thing that white is better, but that just came out. That's not. You can't, you go to Shakespeare's time, they don't be talking about white people. And most they said, what was, was the famous play, Author for Moore? These are cultural differences. Then just no such thing as race. You know, I had a preacher, I heard a preacher trying to connect with the people, you know, he said, yes, and so and so, and Queen of Sheba is black. And I was like, wait, so you can't hold up the Bible as your reference and say the Queen of Sheba was black. Because that's not what the book says. Back then, there was no black. In fact, there was no African. Mm -hmm. If you back then they call you use dark skin, they go, oh, that's an Ethiop. I mean, you came from that area with dark. You know what I mean? Mm. So I mean, people don't think they just react. And so here's, like I said, you having a meeting, and all of a sudden somebody say, nigga, and the meeting goes into disarray because oh, blah, 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 blah. well, you get a fight or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah.